Eric, thanks so much. Um, yeah, I appreciate you inviting me to talk and great meeting and I'm sorry we can't be uh, live today, but uh, Zoom is pretty good too. So um, Eric asked me to speak about UCL injuries and who needs um, surgery. So you want to first ask some basic um, questions when you see somebody. And honestly, the first one I usually ask is, do you want to continue playing baseball? Because especially some of these uh, uh, you know, high school kids and younger kids uh, have decided they, they don't want to play in college. And honestly, if somebody doesn't want to play baseball, they really don't need their UCL uh, reconstructed. Uh, another question to ask is what position do you play? Um, pitching obviously is the highest demand uh, position and more likely to require surgical intervention. Position players, especially, you know, like first baseman uh, can often get by uh, without surgery. Um, one more question to ask is, have you had elbow problems in the past? And this is significant, especially if you've got a partial tear, because if, if the patient's had, you know, four episodes before where they've been shut down and rehab and it keeps coming back, that's obviously something that would tip you more towards uh, surgical intervention as opposed uh, to a first time event. And then what type of tear is it? Obviously, uh, full thickness tears, uh, generally, we treat those with surgical reconstruction. Uh, the exception uh, might be uh, an arthritic uh, elbow in a late career athlete. A lot of times those elbows will get so stiff they can actually throw fine with no UCL. Uh, for partial tears, um, non-surgical treatment can certainly uh, be uh, considered. Um, it's something I, I talk a lot about because we actually did a uh, study several years ago looking at this uh, topic and we uh, went through the Rockies organization over six seasons. Uh, we found 45 um, UCL uh, injuries and 30 of those we treated uh, non-surgical. And I will point out those were all incomplete injuries. All the uh, complete tears did get treated with surgery, but we followed these 30 players uh, and the results were surprisingly good. So it, for return to same level of play, um, we were, had over 90% success rate for both pitchers and uh, position players. So really the, you know, the conclusion um, of our studies was that incomplete UCL injuries in pro baseball players oftentimes can be successfully seated, uh, treated without surgery. Um, we just, uh, it's not, this is, hasn't been presented or published yet, but interestingly, we just followed 27 of these players long term. So a lot of these guys had eight to 10 years of follow up and uh, none of the ones that we successfully treated without surgery went on to require UCL reconstruction. So that was a, it's an interesting long term follow up. So a lot of people ask me, you know, how, how do we do it? Well, I think if you're gonna treat these non-surgically, you, you really gotta be committed to it. You can't shortcut it because then things aren't gonna work. So first of all, you know, no throwing for four to eight weeks. Um, some of that depends on severity of injury. Usually we're talking about at least um, six uh, weeks of no throwing. If it's a bad sprain, sometimes eight weeks. I usually will get them in um, physical therapy to work on uh, elbow range of motion, shoulder strengthening, keep them busy. And I'll see them back um, at the end of that no throw period, um, see how they're feeling. Uh, if they still have pain then, especially if they have pain with a moving valgus stress test, I think that is a negative prognostic sign. But if they feel good, uh, no pain with valgus stress, then we'll um, sort them on a throwing program. Um, but, but to get them back to full competition, that usually takes about another six to eight weeks. So, when you're embarking on a, a non-surgical treatment uh, program, I usually t do tell the athletes this is going to take about three months. It's not a not a quick uh, process. You know, so what what are we not saying with that study? Uh, you know, we're certainly not trying to say that all UCL tears um, can and should be treated non-surgically. Obviously, the picture you're looking at right there, that ligament's uh, pretty much blasted, and I would definitely recommend surgery for that. You know, in, in, our, in our presentation, we also said, um, you know, successful non-surgical treatment is maybe not a long-term solution, but again, some of our newest data uh, may suggest otherwise. But I always remind people, too, that um, surgery isn't necessarily a long-term solution either, because some of these guys get reconstructed and do well for six or eight years and then get re-injured. So even though the reconstruction is a, a great operation, doesn't necessarily last forever. Other points to consider, um, location. Um, in our study, uh, we did not see a difference um, in success rate based on location of injury. Uh, my colleagues with the Indians uh, looked at some of their athletes and 
uh, they showed a pretty high uh, failure rate with non-operative treatment of distal tears. Uh, however, if you do uh, dig into their uh, data uh, a little more, if you, if you look at high-grade distal tears, uh, their success rate was poor. They had an 88% uh, failure rate. But if you look at distal non-high-grade tears, their success rate wasn't bad, it was 60%. So I, I would uh, offer to you, you know, not all distal tears are the same. Uh, I think if there's stripping of the ligament distally with preservation of ligament thickness, those, those can be treated non-surgically. However, if the ligament's kind of disrupted at the sublime tubercle, I think surgery is probably the best way to go. So for this one, for example, uh, you can see, you know, the ligaments uh, peeled up at the uh, sublime uh, tubercle. I don't know if you guys can see this arrow on my screen. I don't know if you can or not, but um, yes, we can see it. what's that? Can you see it? Yeah, we can see oh. it very nicely. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Yeah. So you can see, um, you know, the ligaments stripped up right here, but still pretty thick and it. You can see it attaching all the way down here. So I think that one actually has a pretty good chance with non-surgical treatment. Um, same thing with this one, you know, again, the ligaments strip, but you can still see pretty good tissue just to that. You know, this one, maybe maybe not so much. Um, you can see it interrupted here. You know, it doesn't uh, look kind of great beyond there. The, the fascinating thing about this one though, this is actually an entry MRI on a guy we drafted with no history of elbow problems. So it, it does go to show you that sometimes even these uh, injuries that you don't think will work out uh, may work out. This one, I would probably say no. You can see, you know, the ligament disrupted at the, at the uh, beginning of the subline tubercle and there's really just nothing beyond there. So even though this, you know, maybe you could say it's kind of a, a partial tear, it's not retraction or anything like that. Uh, I don't like the look of that. I would recommend uh, surgery for that. Uh, similarly for this one, um, again, disruption right where it attaches on sublime tubercle and you don't see a whole lot distally. So it's really more of a focal tear as opposed to like a stripping. Um, you know, another thing to talk about is biologics. Um, we in our study did not do any sorts of injections. Uh, there are a few studies out there. They're, they're not great uh, methodologically. Uh, this was a study out of uh, Los Angeles and they had 34 athletes uh, with a single injection of leukocyte rich PRP and actually did have pretty good uh, return to play rate of 88%. Uh, this is a study out of uh, New York. Now they use ACP injections, which is uh, leukocyte poor. Uh, results weren't as good, so perhaps the the PRP formulation, uh, you know, made a difference. Uh, in terms of our treatment, we, you know, certainly will currently consider PRP injections for partial tears, uh, but unsure, you know, if it does significantly improve success rate. Um, some folks did look at the MLB data recently. Um, pretty big numbers. The data, however, isn't. Um, it's not a great data set. Um, they found uh, 544 pro players treated without surgery, 133 with PRP, 411 without. Overall return to play was uh, not as good as ours. And then the really the only finding that was significant was that the no PRP group had a faster return to throwing. Um, the, the data was a little skewed though. The PRP group was older and more commonly major league as opposed to minor league. And what that's kind of saying to me is these are probably more beat up ligaments, kind of uh, later in career guys that were ho hoping to avoid surgery. And so they probably didn't have as, as good a chance to do well anyway. And then the finding that the no PRP group returned to throwing quicker kind of makes perfect sense because if you inject PRP, you're usually going to shut them down longer than if you didn't. So I'm not sure that's uh, all that uh, significant. So um, in summary, uh, non-surgical treatment can be considered for partial tears, especially uh, proximal ones. Uh, we will sometimes consider PRP or other biologics. However, if you have you know, a complete tear or a player with a history of previous non-surgical treatment of a partial tear, uh, those probably best treated with surgery. And then like the cases we showed before, high-grade distal partial tears also probably best treated with surgery. I want to leave you with one more um, case. This is really interesting. So this is a 16-year-old kid. He's down in the Dominican Republic, um, pretty high prospect guy. I think he got signed for like three quarters of a million dollars. He's an outfielder in the Rockies organization. 
So I get a call in February and they say, yeah, a kid threw from the outfield, fell to pop in his elbow. We, we get the MRI and, you know, again, this ligament is blasted here, completely disrupted. So I said, yeah, we, we should probably reconstruct that. Um, COVID hits and so he, he can't come. And, and now we're into like July, August and restrictions are lifted. We're trying to figure out how to get him here and quarantine and all that. And, and one of our athletic trainers says, hey, you want to, you know, maybe just repeat the MRI before we fly him up here. I said, sure, yeah, no problem. So we get the MRI and, and look, look at this. Uh, I mean, it looks like this kid never had an injury. Now the story is not over because he's, he's rehabbing right now. He has no pain. And I, I, I don't know, maybe this is all like bridging scar and he won't do well, but it, it is fascinating. And, and I do think, unfortunately, a lot of our younger players just with the, uh, you know, pressures of um, sport in our society um, get pushed into surgery um, quickly um, because again, that's a very significant injury and, and a pretty interesting finding that he did so well. So maybe next year I can update you and tell you how he did. So uh, that'll do it for this talk. Thanks very much.